She denied this poor old lady alone and instantly regrets it. We open with a rickety truck arriving at this really beautiful castle in Pasadena, California. The year is 1969. A man and a woman jump down from the truck and the woman runs to knock at the door, shouting to a certain Mrs. Sean Sandina to come and help their son Juan. Their son has been hearing voices for the last three nights. He thinks something is coming for him. She asks what the son did. They tell her that he stole a silver necklace from a gypsy wagon. They tried to give it back, but the gypsies wouldn't take it. She asks for it and they bring it out. She sees it and sort of feels something. We also see an insect fly around her face. Then she asks them to bring him inside. Inside, Juan is seeing hands on the ceiling while the woman is summoning her gods. While that is going on, some spirit violently enters the room and is whooping everyone's butt. It throws everyone to the floor, then takes Juan and throws him downstairs. He doesn't die though, but when he tries to stand up, the floor starts cracking and then a hand from below appears and drags him to hell. Sean says they'll meet again. Oh, you plan on going down there? Me too. Anyway, Anyway, that's just the prologue. Now to the movie proper. We see a woman, Christine, practicing her diction while she's driving. She now heads into a Wilshire Pacific Bank, where she works, and after attending to some customers, she has the empty assistant manager seat and then walks up to her boss, Mr. Jax, to ask him if he has made his decision for the vacant position. He says no, but it's between her and the new guy, Stu. Honestly, from the vibe, Stu is looking like the favorite. Christine takes her lunch break and goes to meet her boyfriend, Clay, who is a professor at a school. They're having lunch together. She helps him fix his printer and then hands him a rare 1929 Standing Liberty coin, and he says he'll add it to his nerdy coin collection. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Anyway, she gets up and leaves. Just as she steps out, Clay gets a call from his mom and they start talking about Christine. He has been dating her for almost a year now, but apparently his parents don't really approve of her. At least he has a girlfriend. They want him to be with some other lady, Amy, who graduated from Yale Law and is a successful attorney now. Christine overhears a conversation and it ruins her mood. She's back in the office now and she can see Stu sucking up to Mr. Jax, handing him Lakers tickets. This is not helping her mood at all. Then her attention is called by a sick old woman, Mrs. Ganoush, who says the bank trucks are at her house and they're taking all her stuff. Relatable. While Christine is trying to explain why the bank is repossessing her stuff, the woman is busy coughing out some really disgusting stuff. She's now explaining to Christine that that has been her home for 30 years and she has been making every payment until the sickness took her eye. She says she just needs a little more time to see things through. <laughs> Christine takes the case to Mr. Jax who just puts all the responsibility back in her hands. He says, it's a tough decision. Your call. Sounds like a test. So she goes back to Mrs. Ganoush who has now removed her teeth in order to eat some candy she found on Christie's desk. On her way back to her desk though, she looks at the empty assistant manager's seat, looks at Stu, then looks back at Mr. Jax and says, I'll take care of it. She tells Mrs. Ganoush that another extension is out of the question, so she suggests options for her, living with her granddaughter, a nursing home, blah blah blah. But Mrs. Ganoush says no to all. You can tell it was a very hard decision for Christine to make out, but she stood by it. Then Mrs. Ganoush falls to her knees in the middle of the bank, begging profusely. The woman grabs a hold of Christine's skirt and Christine calls security. Then Mrs. Ganoush says, you shame me? I beg you and you shame me before she's let down by security. Christine calls out her name and tries to approach her, but Mrs. Ganoush turns angrily and yells something, stretching out her hand like she wants to choke her. Mr. Jax comes and tells Christine she handled it just right, but from the look on her face, she's not sure she did. At closing time, Mr. Jax approaches her and tells her she did a great job on someone's loan. He asks her to take it home and finish it up because he'd like to show it to the regional veep in the morning. Before he leaves, he tells her she's now at the top of the list for the assistant manager's position. Stu hears that and he's not loving it at all. Christine now goes to her car at the parking lot and it's looking really lonely and scary. She sees Mrs. Ganoush's car and even hears her cough. Then she gets into her car and sees the old woman's little rag flying around. She's startled when it lands on her windscreen, but it soon flies away. She turns and watches as it flies around. Then to her utmost shock, she sees Mrs. Ganoush in the backseat of her car. She says, you shame me again, and then grabs Christine by the ear. Christine quickly reaches for her stapler and attacks Mrs. Ganoush with it, putting some pins in her forehead and in her eye. But it doesn't stop the old woman. She's got that dog in her. So Christine then manages to shift her gear into reverse and step on the accelerator. Her car hits a car behind, but that still doesn't phase the old woman. She has Christine in a chokehold now, and not in the fun way. So Christine struggles to shift the gear to drive and then steps on the accelerator again. While the car is heading straight for another car, she manages to put her seatbelt on. Upon collision, Mrs. Ganoush is thrown forward and she loses her teeth. Meanwhile, Christine is good. The old woman tries to bite Christine, but she has no teeth, so it's just 
just really disgusting, but obviously not harmful to Christine. But it's not over. Mrs. Ganoush puts her teeth back on, but Christine throws something in her mouth. She pukes the thing out and it nearly hits Christine. Christine then manages to kick the old woman out of her car and lock the doors. But instead of her just driving off, she's there gloating. And that gives Mrs. Ganoush enough time to find a rock and smash her window with it. She now drags Christine out of the car and all the old woman does is take a button from Christine's jacket. She's now holding it up and saying some incantations and Christine is just watching in shock. Then Mrs. Ganoush says, soon it will be you who comes begging to me. Then she puts the button back in Christine's hand and leaves. Then we see an insect fly around just as we saw in the prologue. Christine now gets up and a few moments later, cops appear. Her boyfriend is there too. She leaves with her boyfriend who says he'll call Mr. Jax to make sure someone walks her to her car every night. But is that the solution to her problems? Surely not. On their walk home, she's thinking she could have just given the woman the extension and avoided the trouble but her boyfriend tells her none of this is her fault. Then all of a sudden, she starts seeing the wind blowing some dead leaves her way. Then she says she wants to get her fortune read. The boyfriend doesn't think it's the best idea, being an intellectual and all, but he eventually agrees. Girls sure do love their astrology or whatever. They go into a shop and meet a man named Ram Jaws. He says it's $60 to get her fortune read, and Clay does exactly what I'd have done, turn around to leave. But Christine really wants this. She offers to pay by herself, but Clay would not let her, so he pays and they get to it. Before Rom starts reading, though, he and Clay get into a little intellectual argument about psychology, but Christine stops them. Rom Jaws now asks for her hand and says, you work with money and you recently lost something, but then she says she hasn't really lost anything. He then says, no, something has recently been taken from you. She says no again. Then he says, a button. Clay interjects, but Rom asks them to be quiet. He continues his reading and then strange things start happening all around the room. He's now looking her dead in the eye and he sees what I'll call the devil. He's startled. He then says that's enough for tonight. She asks him what's wrong and he doesn't really say anything. He's just making excuses, saying he's tired and all that. He even promises to refund her money. But Christine wants to know what he saw, so she insists. He says a dark spirit has come upon her, and it's perhaps because someone has cursed her. But being the intellectual that he is, Clay is not very convinced that Ram Jaws is legit. He thinks he just made some guesses and left her with some questions. But you can tell that Christine doesn't think Ram is a scam artist. Anyway, they arrive home and Clay has to rush out to go see the guy who's towing her car. He says he'll be back in an hour. Where's well, time to be home alone, love? Outside, we see the wind blowing some dead leaves towards the house. Inside, Christine is doing some work in front of her computer and then goes to the kitchen. There, she hears a sound. She goes to check what it is and she just keeps hearing some creaking noises all around the house. You can see how frightened she is, but she manages to walk further to get a sight of what made that noise. Then when she looks outside, a gust of wind blows some dead leaves towards her direction and her lights go off. Inside her house, it's madness. Her pots and pans are making a hell of a noise, so she rushes to close her window and the noise stops. She can now see something that looks like the silhouette of a beast, and before she knows it, it hits her to the floor. Then the lights come back on and normalcy is restored. Her boyfriend gets back and she tells him what happened. He insists it was Mrs. Ganoush that came to the house and says he's calling the cops, but Christine says there wasn't anybody here. She doesn't know how to explain what happened to her overly practical boyfriend, but they call a doctor and he says it's just PTSD. After, Clay suggests that they take a trip to his folks cabin at Santa Barbara. That night, while they're asleep, a mosquito flies in from the window, lands on Christine's face, and then goes up her nose. Ugh, gross. It comes out a couple seconds later and then goes into her mouth. I've been known to hit both holes back to back. <laughs> Anyway, then she wakes up. She looks around and everything seems normal, so she lies back down. But immediately as she does, some scary looking monster attacks her from exactly where her boyfriend was lying down. The monster then pukes some really disgusting worms on her face and she wakes up. It was just a dream. Ugh, you really had me there. Clay drives her to work the next day. As she settles in her seat in the office, she hears that annoying buzz of a mosquito. But this time, it sounds like it's coming from inside her tummy. Then Stu comes and asks her to finish teaching him the loan procedures. But she says she has a lot on her mind and asks for them to do it tomorrow. But he manages to blackmail her and she starts teaching him. But as she's talking to him, she starts visualizing the old woman's hands on the desk. It really gets in her head. So she stands up and yells, get your filthy pig knuckle off my desk. Just then, she gets a call. And when she answers it, she notices she's bleeding from her nose. Mr. Jax is there now and offers her a little towel. But she just starts puking blood and basically bathes her boss in spaghetti juice. She immediately takes her stuff and runs out of the bank. As Stu stealthily takes a file from her desk, Christine heads straight to Mrs. Ganoush's granddaughter, Lenka's house, to look for her. Apparently, her grandmother had already told her about Christine and told her she would come. Christine tries to explain herself, but it doesn't work. Lenka says she's not welcome here, but Christine pushes a little. She tells her she needs her grandmother to forgive her, and if she does, she'll get her house back. Lenka then says, and you'll make everything all right for her? And unsuspecting, Christine says yes. So she lets Christine in, and guess what? Mrs. Ganoush is dead. Christine even trips over her, and her body falls right on top of her, with some liquid from the dead body's mouth rushing into her own mouth. How refreshing. People come and lift the body, and Mrs. Ganoush still manages to get 
yank off a huge chunk of Christine's hair. Then Lenka shows up and says, still going to make everything all right for her? You deserve everything that's coming to you. And she leaves. Christine then goes back to Ram, and he says he believes what plagues her is something called the Lamia. She recognizes that word. It's the word the old woman used. He says it's the black goat, who's only summoned by gypsies for their darkest deeds. He says for the first three days, the Lamia appears as a nasty spirit and torments the subject. After that, it reveals itself as a taker of souls and comes for the owner of the accursed object. She now figures that the accursed object is the button, and she asks what happens if she burns it. Ram says, no matter what condition the button is, she would still be the owner, and the Lamia would still come to take her to hell. Ram says one thing she can do is appease the spirits, and the simplest way to do that is through an offering. She could sacrifice a small creature like a chicken, but she says no way because she's a vegetarian. Ram, I don't think this lady wants help. Next customer, please. Ram tells her she'll be surprised what she'll be willing to do when the Lamia comes for her, and then hands her a book titled Animal Sacrifices in the Service of Deities. For dummies, she goes home and is going through the book. A few moments later, she closes it, and then hears a sound from outside. Oh, not again, is the look on her face. But she stands and goes to confront that thing making that noise. Now she can see the Lamia running around outside her house. She runs upstairs to her room and it follows her up the stairs. She locks herself in her room like this evil spirit is some calm guy with manners who will knock and wait for her to open up. She's now calling Clay who is not even looking at his phone. When the Lamia shows up at her door, it shows up on her screen and at the window. Now it is carrying her and throwing her all around the room. It finally throws her up against the shelf and then leaves her in her now messy room. She goes to the kitchen and grabs a knife and absolutely butchers her pet cat and buries it in the backyard. I personally would have just gone to maybe buy a chicken to kill instead of sacrificing my own pet, but that's just me. Clay comes in while she's burying the cat and he notices blood on her shirt, but she lies that it's just tomato juice. He has to reschedule their dinner because she hasn't been herself in the last few days. She admits she hasn't, but she wants to go for dinner because she thinks everything is going to be okay now. She has faith in her sacrifice. She goes up to dress up and comes out looking great in this beautiful yellow dress and they head to Clay's parents' beautiful house. Clay says they're going to love her, but they open the door and I am not feeling much love for her, especially from his mom. His mom reluctantly accepts the cake Christine offered her after a series of questions. As they're walking through the dining table, their cat makes a face at her. Wow, I guess word travels fast in the cat kingdom. Anyway, they're at the dinner table now and they're talking about Christine's job. Christine is speaking brilliantly and you can see Clay beaming with pride. But then his mom says, your mom must be really proud. And that leads to a conversation about how her mom is an alcoholic and how she has not been talking much since her dad died. But somehow, that's what endears her to Clay's mom. She says she finds Christine's honesty so refreshing and then reveals that her own dad had a drinking problem and she was always too ashamed to admit it. She says Christine has backbone, unlike Clay's ex. Everything is good now. They're all laughing and all is well with the world. And you know what that means, right? Oh yeah, something is about to go horribly wrong. And right on cue, Christine starts seeing and hearing things. She sees an eye in her cake and stabs it, but of course it wasn't really there. She tries to act normal, but Clay notices that everything isn't exactly normal. She soon starts coughing and then coughs out a mosquito. Then the sounds she's hearing in her head become deafening. So she takes a glass from the table and throws it at the door, shouting, okay, I hear you, leave me alone. At that point, she realizes she has lost Clay's parents, so she just excuses herself. Clay wants to follow her, but his mom doesn't want him to. She says Christine is sick. Christine goes straight to Ram, and she's really pissed. She says she did what he asked her to, but nothing has changed. Ram says, these are elusive and powerful forces we are dealing with. There are no guarantees. In simple English, she clapped her cat for nothing. Ram now says that what she has to do is speak to the spirit and dissuade it from taking her soul. He says he knows someone that can help. At this point, Christine is a little skeptical, but he says tomorrow is the third day. After that, the Lamia will come for her, and they can't let that happen. He then says the woman who will help will put herself at great risk, so Christine will have to pay her 10 grand in cash by tomorrow. So the next day, she shows up at the office, puts on her lipstick, and goes into Mr. Jack's office to ask for an advance for her new position. But here's the thing, the deal she was working on fell through, and it looks like the new position is going to be Stu's after all. She goes straight home and is just throwing things into a box. She's in the basement now. She opens a shelf, and boom, Mrs. Ganoush pops out and puts her entire arm inside Christine's mouth. Christine manages to clap her and then she finds out that all of that just happened in her head. She drags her box to a pawn shop and all she has is only worth $3,800. She's back home now eating ice cream and crying when her boyfriend comes back and reminds her that she's lactose intolerant. But she says, screw it, relatable. He tells her he paid Ramjas and she's shocked because she thought he didn't believe. He says he doesn't know what he believes anymore but since it's important to her and she believes in it, he's doing it. They share a cute moment and he drives her to the location Ram provided to her but he can't go in with her because Ram said she has to go alone. And where's his place? Yes, that castle from 1969. And the woman who's going to help her is none other than Shad Sedana. She tells Christine the story of Juan, how that was the first time she encountered the spirit and how she lost him to the beast. She says she has waited years for a chance to redeem herself, a chance to destroy the 
the foul thing, and she says her chance has come tonight, but to summon the spirit, she needs Christine to be strong. Christine says she'll try. They walk into a huge room and all three of them sit down around a table. Then a little white goat is brought in. Anyway, the goat is chained to the table, a candle is lit, and the lights are dim. Then Shauna takes out a knife, says some incantations, kisses it, and tells Christine, once the spirit has entered me, put my hand upon the animal. She'll then force the spirit of the Lamia into the goat, and that's when Milos, the other guy with her, should strike the goat. All four of them now hold hands around the table, and Shauna says they'll all have to be receptive. Then she starts singing. Christine, who is scared, asks Ram what she's supposed to be doing. Ram says she has to let the darkness in. He asks her to repeat the words, I welcome the dead into my soul, and say it with conviction. They're saying it over and over now. And then, Shauna stops them abruptly. She says something else is in there with them. Then they start seeing movements, and hearing sounds everywhere. Shauna says it is not the Lamia, but the spirit of someone's settled soul from years ago. Then we see some strange creature enter the room. A couple strange creatures actually, but Shauna casts them away and then says, she is coming. The entire place starts rumbling. The sound is absolutely deafening, and then it stops. The Lamia enters into Shauna, and Ram is now communicating with it. It says it wants Christine's soul, and Christine is now trying to explain that it wasn't her fault. Ram silences her. She then stretches her hand to Christine, but Christine grabs the hand and puts it on the goat. Then boom, the goat starts talking, saying all sorts of things to Christine. Milos then strikes the goat, but not well enough to kill it. So the goat bites him, and boom, the Lamia is in him now. He's hovering, and when Ram tries to cast the spirit away from him, he goes and chokes him. Milos is now dancing mid-air, and he starts a fire. Ram tries to cast the spirit away again, but the Lamia just uses his powers to pick a chair and slam it against him. Ram falls to the ground. Now it's just the Lamia and Christine left. Christine tries to run away, but he stops her. He then says he doesn't want her stupid cat, then literally pukes it out. Man, this movie is disturbing. He now goes in to bite Christine, but Ram manages to wake Shauna up at just the perfect time, and she casts the spirit from Milos. Some red particles come out from his mouth, and he falls to the table. It's done. And then Shauna falls and dies. An ambulance comes and takes her away. They're outside now, and Ram is telling Christine that the Lamia was not banished. The goat was never slaughtered, so the Lamia will be back for the owner of the cursed object. So he asks her for the button. She brings it out and asks her to put it in an envelope and give it out to someone as a gift, thereby transferring ownership and by extension, the curse to the person. Now we see her and her boyfriend driving home. They nearly hit an old man on their way, and the man just keeps saying, you will burn in hell while pointing to Christine. Meanwhile, the contents of her bag have fallen in the car. She frantically looks for an envelope and eventually finds it. Lane drops her home and reminds her of their St. Barbara trip tomorrow, and that she has to be at the station by 7.30. She says there's something she has to do, but she'll meet up with him. She's now at a coffee shop holding the envelope and waiting for someone to walk in. One of the attendants is trying to get her to leave because coffee drinkers don't tip. And Christine says, you better keep the coffee coming or I'll give you a tip you won't forget. Good thing the lady heeds the warning and backs off. Christine then sees a man who has an oxygen mask strapped to his face sitting on his own and then approaches him. But then she sees an old woman walk to the old man and has a change of heart. She then gets an idea. She calls Stu and asks him to be at the coffee shop in 10 or she'll tell Mr. Jax that he stole that file from her desk. He shows up in record time, crying and begging. She nearly hands over the button to him but changes her mind. She can't figure out who deserves it. Then she sees Mrs. Ganusha's obituary in the paper and the best idea pops up in her head and she leaves immediately. She first goes to Ram's office to be sure she can give a gift to a deceased person. He says she can, so she's now driving straight to Mrs. Ganusha's grave. But on her way, the old woman's rag first covers her windscreen, then enters her car and covers her face. She brings her car to a stop, pulls the rag away from her face, and throws it away. The thing then tries to get into her mouth, but Christine manages to stop it and pull it out, tear it apart, and stomp on it. That thing is persistent. She now goes into the graveyard, digs Mrs. Ganusha's grave, opens her casket, and tries to force the envelope into her hand. Somehow, this dead woman still manages to grab a chunk of Christine's hair and pull it out. But that was not enough for Christine. So she lifts the envelope, announces that she's making a formal gift of the button to Sylvia Ganoush, and then puts it in her mouth. She then says goodbye and climbs out, but it's not done yet. With the rain falling and everywhere being muddy, she's finding it really difficult to climb out of the grave. Then Mrs. Ganoush gets up and is just floating about. Then the huge cross which is hanging above the grave falls on Christine's head and she goes underwater. But after a few seconds, she emerges and climbs out. She gets home, takes a shower, and receives a call from Mr. Jax, saying they found out Stu stole the file and tried to broker her his own deal. Basically, he's fired and she gets her promotion. She's now off to the train station and while Clay is waiting and examining the ring with which he tends to propose, she decides to stop by and buy a coat. She meets him right on time though and thanks him for always believing in her and also admits she could have given Mrs. Ganush an extension on her loan and she takes accountability for that. They kiss and they live happily ever after, right? Wrong. Clay brings out an envelope and tells her she dropped it in his car last night. What's in the envelope? The button. It would appear that she picked up the wrong envelope last night after the contents of her bag were emptied in his car and she didn't for once think to confirm what was in the envelope. Apparently, the one she shoved into Mrs. Ganusha's mouth had the standing liberty quarter she gave him, so she just went through all that stress to give the dead woman free money. She's now screaming and moving backwards, and she falls to the train track just as a train is approaching. Then a hand comes from underneath, and you know what it does. Yes, it drags her to hell.
Moral of the story, get religion.